Okay, so we're on the final step, step seven, which is calculating our ZS value. Now this is as far as they want you to take it at level two. They want you to get up to this stage where you calculate your ZS value for your circuit. And that's where we're up to now. So you can see on here, we've got lightning circuit, radial circuit, and we've gone through this formula, haven't we? Which is this one. And we've satisfied each part of it so far, and we've selected our cable sizes, one mil and 2.5 mil. We previously calculated our R1, R2 value, so we're gonna bring that into this, this step now and add it to our ZE to give us our ZS value. And then we're gonna check compliance with the ZS maximum values. We're gonna look at them in the on-site guide and in BS7671. So let's look at it now. Okay, so look at the top of our formula we can see. We know this already, don't we? ZS is equal to ZE, which is the external resistance, plus the R1, R2 value, which we've calculated here, haven't we? Yeah, so our earth fault loop impedance value is gonna be um, equal to our ZE, so the earth fault loop impedance for the external part of the circuit, plus the part of our circuit which is in, which we've installed. Right, okay, first of all, let's analyze this. We need to know our ZE values, don't we? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at this, aren't we? Depends on the earthing system, doesn't it? TNS and TNCS. So let's go for TNCS first. So the maximum permissible ZE value for a TNCS is 0 0.35 ohms, okay? We already know this, but I'm gonna write this down for us. And the maximum for a TNS is 0 0.80 ohms, okay? So if you forget those, the best place to find them is open your on-site guide, go to the first bit, the introduction, and just go to the bottom of the page, and both of those are inputted there. There's a few places that are in there, but if you wanna just go straight there for a quick reference, that's what I'd say. Anyway, so now we know our ZE value, surely we can come down here now, and we can do these two circuits, and we can calculate our ZS, okay? So if we know that our ZE for this side is a TNS system, so it's gonna be 0 0.80 ohms. And we know on this side, it's gonna be equal to 0 0.35 ohms, okay? So we know that now, perfect. So what can we do now? We can add this to our R1, R2 value, can't we, to get our ZS? So let's put this in, 0 0.80 plus 1.95 equals 2.75 ohms. Okay, so that's our ZS value for this circuit. Let's go on this side and do the same again. So this is gonna be equal to 0 0.35 plus 0 0.46, yeah? Which is our maximum ZE plus our R1, R2 value, okay? And that's gonna be equal to 0 0.81 ohms. Right, so that's our ZS value for the radial circuit. Perfect, so let's underline those so we can recognize those afterwards. Okay, fine. So now what do we need to do? Now we need to check that they're compliant, don't they, with this type of circuit breaker on this type of circuit that we've created, we've designed, okay? And the same over here, we need to check that this is less than the maximum ZS value permissible for a radial circuit using a 61009 RCBO. So that's why we've got these two tables here in the middle. They're showing us the same kind of information, and I've extracted these from BS7671, this top one, that's the big brown book, and the on-site guide, which is your on-site guide. So what we need to do, let's do this one first. Let's go on this side. So what have we got? Remember we said we're using a type B60898, aren't we? So we're using a B60898, okay? Fine. So let's go on here. So a type B, this top layer here, is telling us for type B circuit breakers, the overcurrent characteristics of RCBO is 61009. Right, fine, so it looks like both our circuits are gonna be from this top line here, aren't they? On the top section here, we've got the rating in amperes, and on the bottom, we've got the ZS value permissible for that particular rating of circuit breaker. Okay, so let's go across, we're doing this one, aren't we, on the left-hand side, the lighting circuit, so we know that our protected device is six amps, isn't it? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to this, this here, we're going to six amps, this bit, and we're going to look down, and there, there is our maximum permissible ZS value for this circuit. So the maximum equals 7.28 ohms. Perfect, 
let's go back and look at our value that we got. Our value is 2.75. So we're happy, aren't we, that that, our circuit we've designed, the ZS value is a fair bit lower than the maximum permissible. Let's go on this side and do the same over here then. So what have we got on this side? We've got a 61009 RCBO, okay? And um, our RCBO is rated at 20 amps. So, same again, come up to this table, and we did a type B, didn't we? Let's put that in so we don't forget about that. So we're on a type B, 61009, which is this column up here, isn't it? Okay, we're on the maximum earth fault loop impedance values for circuit breakers at 230 volts. We're on the right table, we're here. So let's go. Let's find 20 amps here. So at 20 amps, using a 61009, our maximum permissible value is 2.19 ohms. Okay, so let's write this in. Max ZS is equal to 2.19 ohms. Okay, let's do the same again. Let's go back and look at our value. Our value is only 0.81. So we're happy, aren't we? That that is compliant. So we comply with the maximum ZS values, okay? So that's perfect. So we've got there. We've got to the end of our process here. There's just one last thing that I wanted to point out to you now. And I'm going to get a different color pen just to show you at the bottom here. And this is worth noting down. The values that are in the on-site guide, which is this one below here, okay? So the on-site guide. Let's write this here. On-site guide ZS. And the values up here, which is from BS761, the big brown book. So let's write BS7671, okay? Right, BS7671 is the large brown book, which has comprehensive details of every single thing we could consider with requirements for electrical installations. Whereas the on-site guide is a baby, baby version of this, which has details which we'd use whilst we were on-site. So what I'm trying to point out here is the ZS values in the BS7671 are 100% values, yeah? 100%, so that's just right here so we're clear. So ZS, ZS in BS761, the lid big brown book is 100% values. When we're doing circuit design, this is the values we wanna choose. We wanna pick them from this book, okay? And the on-site guide ZS, these are 80% values. Because these already take into account ambient temperature, etc. Because it's for use on site. Designing a circuit in an office like we're doing, we're going to use these values. And let's just prove this to you. So 100% values are in BS7671. So let's take our, our particular one that we chose here. So for a BS60898 6 amp circuit breaker, yeah, our maximum ZS permissible is 7.28 ohms. And that came from this table up here, didn't it? That's this orange circle here. For 6 amp, BS60898, the maximum is 7.28, okay? Let's look at that exact situation, but inside this extract from the on-site guide, okay? So a B-type, this column, yeah? So we're on circuit breakers, maximum measured earth fault loop impedance, okay? So in at ambient temperature, perfect. So that's what we're looking at. So B, 6 amp, 5.87. So, look at that, 5.87. So inside the on-site guide, the value for a 6 amp 60898 circuit breaker was 5.87, except in the BS7671, the 100% values was 7.28. So can you see those two numbers? Yeah, there's the 100% value, 7.28, and there's the 80% value, 5.87. This is for when we're on site measuring circuits. This BS7671, the large brown book, is for designing circuits, okay? So I just want you to bear that mind at the, in, at the very end of this. So that's the whole process there, gone through. Use each individual video to revise ZS, volt drop, individual things, or watch the whole entire thing through because it's gonna be perfect for your synoptic assignment. It's gonna give you most of the information you need. Obviously, there's a lot more to it than just this, what I've shown you. You know, there's different loads, there's different supplies, there's different lengths of circuits, different installation methods. This is just two examples that have kept quite simple for you to follow the process and understand. At level two, this is where they want you to get to.